21st. This week marks the 100th anniversary of the publication of Albert Einstein's greatest work, a series of papers laying out the general theory of relativity. Einstein attempted to unify the universe with a single perfect equation. He came close, but left behind a mystery too strange to solve. Decades later, the very thing he rejected has returned, not in theory, but inside a machine. A machine that doesn't follow the rules of physics. It rewrites them. What it just uncovered goes beyond gravity, beyond time, and maybe even beyond reality itself. So what did quantum computers find in Einstein's forgotten math? And why does it feel like we were never meant to know? Einstein's Lost Equation versus the Quantum Machine Albert Einstein, the father of modern physics who gifted humankind the field equations of general relativity in 1915. Space and time stop being a silent stage. They flex like a trampoline beneath every planet and star. Apples no longer fall because an invisible force grabs them. They fall because Earth's mass dents the cosmic canvas. Yet for Einstein, this triumph is only a waypoint. He dreams of one grand melody, a unified field that merges gravity with light itself. His chalk keeps returning to the slate, hunting an equation so perfect it would hum like a tuning fork through the whole cosmos. The snag is quantum theory the unruly jazz refusing to harmonize with his classical symphony. Quantum mechanics suggests that particles can jump, blur, and even exist in two places at once. Einstein recoils. God does not play dice with the universe, he mutters, convinced nature is orderly and exact. Fast forward a century. In subterranean labs bathed in blue neon, engineers chill metal chips to temperatures colder than interstellar space. Inside those chips reside qubits, quantum bits that whisper in superpositions. They do not care for classical certainty. They revel in uncertainty and within that revelry, they solve puzzles ordinary computers cannot even phrase. These quantum engines inhabit the very mathematics Einstein resisted. And here lies a cosmic irony sharper than any academic feud. By embracing the dice he refused to roll, we may complete the theory he could not finish. What if Einstein's own equations were feeding into a quantum processor? The machine does not merely calculate space-time curvature, it embodies the same rules. Gravity and silicon probability in superconducting circuits. Chalk dust becomes entanglement, linking qubits so tightly that distance loses meaning. The spooky action that once haunted Einstein turns into a practical engineering tool. Suddenly, our generation holds hardware capable of testing the missing bridge between the quantum and the cosmic. The riddle that tormented Einstein might be cracked not by a grander formula, but by a colder laboratory. In chasing perfection on the slate, he may have overlooked perfection in circuitry. Perhaps the universe plans to reveal itself not under harsh arc lamp glare, but in the hush of a quantum chip humming quietly in the dark. What if the very phenomenon Einstein feared most, quantum randomness, is what finally completes the theory he died chasing. Wormholes entanglement in the reality-breaking experiments. Remember the wormhole scene in Interstellar, that jaw-dropping moment when the ship bends through space and emerges light years away in an instant. Now imagine recreating that inside a quantum computer. In late 2022, researchers at Google and Caltech did something that sounds ripped straight from science fiction. Using their Sycamore processor, a small but powerful array of entangled qubits, they simulated a traversable wormhole. No spinning vortex, no glowing portal. But mathematically, it behaved just like an Einstein-Rosen bridge. Quantum information was injected on one side, vanished into simulated space-time, and popped out the other. Not a spaceship, but pure entangled data, teleported across a synthetic universe. 
This wasn't a metaphor, it was a real experiment. And it may be the first step toward turning science fiction into physical law. Why does this matter? Because a bold conjecture known as ER equals EPR claims every pair of entangled particles is linked by a microscopic wormhole. Einstein and Rosen invented wormholes to describe black hole geometry. Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen devised the paradox of entanglement. Decades later, theorists stitched the ideas together. The fabric of space-time might literally be threaded by quantum intimacy. Entanglement is not a weird add-on to physics. It may be physics. Laboratories are tugging at those invisible threads. Researchers at the University of Maryland use trapped ions to emulate the Schwinger model, a pocket universe where electric fields yank matter from the vacuum. By tuning qubit couplings, they witness particle-antiparticle pairs forming warping synthetic space, then annihilating. Elsewhere, tabletop analogs of Hawking radiation sprout from nonlinear crystals, where flashes of light imitate particles escaping a black hole horizon. These are not theoretical sketches. They are filmed, graphed, peer-reviewed phenomena. Most startling are glimpses of entanglement-induced time dilation. In exquisitely controlled circuits, highly entangled qubits tick more slowly than their less entangled neighbors, echoing how gravity drags clock hands near massive bodies. Entanglement appears to mimic the hallmarks of gravity. The border between geometry and information thins. Project forward a decade, Quantum processors could host tens of millions of qubits. If a hundred entangled qubits twist software space-time, what happens when the web grows a thousand-fold? Do we still have a model, or do we begin birthing authentic curvature? Are we spectators building metaphors, or engineers forging micro-universes? The line blurs almost weakly. A tremor of existential awe follows. Alchemists once tried transmuting lead to gold. Quantum engineers might soon transmute code into curvature. If entanglement can be woven like cloth, could we braid a tunnel wide enough to walk through or craft a clinic where time flows slowly, giving surgeons extra moments to save lives? Each new experiment feels less like reading nature's diary and more like writing paragraphs in it. If entanglement can imitate gravity, what happens when processors hold millions of entangled qubits? Are we observing physics or clandestinely becoming its architects? Reality as a compression algorithm. Take a steady breath because now science and philosophy intertwine. Ever heard about the cramming of every scroll of the ancient library of Alexandria onto the surface of a single grain of sand? That impossible compression mirrors what a black hole accomplishes. According to the holographic principle, every bit of data plunging past a black hole's edge is smeared across its two-dimensional surface, not buried in three-dimensional depth. Nature whispers a radical hint. The universe may be information first, geometry second. Quantum computers echo this cosmic trick. Through entanglement, two qubits can store four classical states, four can store 16, and onward the doubling climbs. Information balloons exponentially while hardware grows linearly. That is real compression, not a clever data trick. Entanglement looks like the currency with which reality budgets its bits. Enter a daring extension to Einstein's equations from physicist Florian Newcart. He introduces an informational stress energy tensor, a term treating quantum correlations as an actual source of energy and momentum. In plain words, information itself bends space-time. Pause on that. Your encrypted diary stored on a future quantum drive would exert a minute gravitational pull because its entanglement pattern reshapes geometry. Knowledge carries literal weight. This insight spawns thrilling possibilities. Suppose an informational curvature operates beside the four known forces. 
where entanglement densifies, space contracts, where information thins, space relaxes. Galaxies might drift upon seas not only of dark matter, but of intertwined statistics. Cosmic voids could be deserts of correlation, while superclusters are snarls of shared quantum history. Loop quantum gravity joins the conversation, proposing that space is not infinitely smooth, but built from tiny loops, Planck-sized Lego bricks clicking together. Time, too, advances in discrete ticks. The universe begins to look less like a grand analog film and more like a computational lattice. Pixels of existence flicker according to fundamental code. Now, place that code within a quantum computer. Its qubits already juggle zeros, ones, and superpositions. The same trinity that might underpin space-time. Scale to a pristine lattice of entanglement and you could, at least in principle, dial curvature, twist causality, perhaps even coax baby universes into existence. The seam between simulation and creation unravels. Yes, the leap from laboratory toy to Cosmo Shaper is monumental. Yet history warns us never to say never. Flight was fantasy until it became economy class. Lasers were curiosity until they performed eye surgery. Quantum teleportation sounded absurd until researchers performed it with photons two decades back, with atoms a decade later, and with fledgling quantum processors last spring. In the future, where architects design not skyscrapers but pockets of engineered space-time, vacuum bubbles where clocks idle, starships driven by artificially generated wormhole currents, museums housed inside realms where centuries linger like afternoons. In that horizon, quantum computers evolve from calculators to cosmological forges. And here is the chill-inducing kicker. Einstein searched for a frozen equation, a timeless truth etched in existence. But perhaps no static sentence exists. Maybe reality is a continual act of computation, a cosmic algorithm updating itself every tick. If so, the cryogenic processors humming in darkened vaults are cousins of the universe, tiny replicas of the same logic, capable of branching the story forward. If our computers can recreate the rules of space and time, how long until they write new ones? When we push the run button on a trillion qubit engine, are we solving for space-time's curve or authoring it? And if the cosmos is computation, then each of us, our thoughts, choices, and dreams, forms a subroutine in that grand program adding fresh lines of code to an ever-expanding reality. And more interestingly, humanity sits just below a Type I civilization on the Kardashev scale. We harness a fraction of the energy available on our planet. But quantum computing could be the key that unlocks our leap forward. A true Type I civilization controls all energy on Earth. Every lightning bolt, ocean wave, and beam of sunlight directed toward growth, innovation, and survival. A Type II taps the full power of its star, perhaps using Dyson spheres. Type III? They command galaxies. Quantum technologies offer more than faster computation. They offer mastery over information itself, the very substrate of reality. If space and time are emergent from entanglement, and entanglement can be engineered, then we're not just moving toward energy mastery, we're inching toward reality design. The future may bring engineered gravity, artificial time zones, programmable matter, or even simulation-based cosmology. It's no longer just about rockets and reactors. Our evolution hinges on controlling complexity. And with every entangled qubit, we move closer to rewriting the laws, not just obeying them. From below Type 1 to perhaps something beyond Type 3. Something Kardashev never imagined. Not a civilization of energy control, but one of reality control. A civilization that computes its own universe. 
Einstein dreamed of unlocking the universe with a single equation. Today, quantum machines may have done it, but the answer raises more questions than it settles. If reality can be simulated, entangled, or rewritten, then what is reality? Maybe we're not just discovering the cosmos, we're starting to build it. And if that's true, one final question remains. Are we the architects of a new universe or just code in one already running? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more scientific breakdowns. Thanks for watching.